Go. Hello, my name is Katie Manning, and welcome to Geeks Audio Heads, and have a lovely day, Chucks. Hey! <laughs> Good evening. This is Audio Heads. Yay! We're a product of Geeks Assembled, and we are gathered here today uh, at this point in, in the timeline to review a What If, an un, another Unbound. Um, this one's called Full Fathom 5, and it's, uh, it's deep in the sea with uh, the doctor and uh, a companion named Jill, I think. And anyway, um, amazing, uh, you know, uh, suspenseful piece. And um, uh, I'm not sure that everybody here likes it, but we will we will give them a chance to say what they'd like about it. And there are a couple of blokes here with me, a couple chaps, a couple right nice fellas. Um, let's see. Let's, yeah, I, I'll just, I'll just let uh, Beef Dad open us up with his, with his uh, impression, his initial thoughts about this. And, uh, so please beef dad yeah good evening um well basically it's about the creation of a super soldier um and it's done pretty unpleasantly um and you have the general uh you have the professor who is who's been doing the works um and his assistant has been doing the professor's been working on one thing the assistant has been working on um something totally different genetically to genetically modify human beings to become super soldiers and he injects them with a <clears throat> with a a genetic, a genetic compound, um, and it's pretty nasty. Uh, the concept of the story is very, very good. I do love the concept of the story. Um, the Doctor, played by David Collins, is very, very good. And Ruth, played by Siri Neal, is also very, very good. Um, That's the one. I'm sorry. You're, you you nailed it. Sorry. Yeah, she's very very good. Um, but the one thing that I didn't like about this is the concept of a doctor who's willing to use a gun to shoot someone down more than once during this. Um, for me, that um, is completely opposite to the Doctor Who that I grew up with and that I have loved for 50 odd years. Um, he would never ever use a weapon. He would use his mind. He would use his intellect. Um, he wouldn't just shoot people. And uh, basically he was, he ends up being called a murderer. And in fact, he so, he so disgusts Ruth that at the end, she shoots him and he re has to regenerate. And um, of course the regenerated doctor at the end is played by Ian Brooker, Brooker, new teeth, Ian Brooker. And he's very, very good. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very 
disconcerting that you have a doctor in this that kills people which doesn't seem right this isn't doctor who for me okay that's it all right um and with that we'll go to lee i want your opinion and your and and your opening thoughts my friend well this this is unbound and it's what if um that's the whole premise of this series um and they had to go down for one of the stories or a couple of the stories in this series down the dark route and this is one of the darker stories and uh i yeah i agree you know the, the doctor's known for not using weapons well maybe except doctor number six um yeah it's uh, i i enjoyed it it's a very atmospheric story uh, you do feel like you're under the sea in a, in a sea base um but with the i do like this dark portrayal of the doctor uh the do, nobody knows the real person it, not even his companion of all the secrets he's kept for 27 years and, and the way david collins plays it it's just brilliantly played um yeah as i say he gets his confidence in the end um made to swallow the TARDIS key and dies and then she gets shot again and um it's just the way it's played out it, it's it, it's um it, it shows you that the doctor isn't human he, he this is the doctor at his most alien um it's um i, I think it's a good story um the actors in it have you know totally totally brilliant um, even um, uh, the general Ed Bishop is brilliantly portrayed the general uh, in this story so but it's a big thumbs up for me for David Collins it's a doctor a doctor that we never had on TV which um, you know he, he could have been a very good doctor on TV because everything else he's been on, on TV he's, he's, he's been top-notch so yeah I enjoyed this one over to you Susan yeah, David Collins was really, really good at this. Um, and Ruth, I, I'm sorry, I called her Julie at the beginning. I was, I guess, I was going on another, on another uh, audio that I was thinking about. Um, like, I could not believe what what I was hearing. Um, yeah, this is a dark doctor. This is a really dark doctor. This is. A properly scary figure alien you know making experiments on humans he's like all those alien stories that you have always heard about aliens and what they do to humans and like you know that that was pretty much what what you were getting and um, and the and the girl was trying to redeem what her father had done and um and the the professor was uh doing one sort of experiment and and there was another sort going on it was you you got a lot of little science stuff in it and um yeah and you know this is a what if, and I guess the um, so I was reading around in the internet. Uh, the the what if of this story was really what if the ends did justify the means, and um, I, I I see that that they went there, um, but they didn't actually go there because in the end. The ends didn't justify the means, and the doctor was shot by by her repeatedly. You know, hoping that he she had enough ammunition to waste him. It's like the Valiard almost in, in the way you know he was described. Um, could have been a master story because he was more willing to <clears throat> experiment on human humanity <clears throat> anyway i 
I thought that the cast was good. I thought that the soundscape was really cool. I thought the the terror and the tension, both the tension and the terror were were great. Um, and I liked the uh, I liked the the fact that we that we have in in this Doctor Who the ability to show these things that are just out there, you know, take the character in a totally different direction for a bit. Um, so I enjoy that aspect of it. Um, were there any favorite moments or least favorite moments? Because I'll just, you know, go around the same direction. Uh, Beef Dad, if you if you do have a favorite moment, would you give it? And and if not, just give give me your least favorite moment. Thanks. I quite enjoyed the showdown between the Doctor and General Flint. Uh, that was superbly done. Um, they they was both so incredibly convincing. Um, and the bit where prof the professor basically had a showdown with Lee, his assistant, was also excellent. Um, possibly the least favourite moment, well in fact you can guess what my least favourite moment is. My least favourite moment is when, uh, when the doctor shot him. That, that wasn't good for me, I didn't like that at all. Um, uh, as you said, the um, soundscape, brilliant. The, the, the actual feeling that you got from it was superb. Uh, it, was re it really involved you. Um, it really did involve you. It was very, very cleverly done. Very cleverly directed. Um, which I believe was Jason Hay Gallery. Yeah, yeah, he's very, very, very good. And such a nice chap. Um, yeah, so yeah, I would say, yeah, that, those, that's probably my, my favorite bits. Thanks, and how about you, Lee? What did you think were your favorite bits or your least favorite bits? Uh, well, well, let's think. I didn't like, I mean, I don't mind the use of the gun. I don't mind that because it, this is a what if, a darker version of the Doctor. Um, I wasn't too keen on the swearing. There was a, quite a bit of swearing in it. Even I think at one point the Doctor swore, um, which, yeah, I wasn't so keen on that. Uh, so I could have just scrapped the uh, swearing out of it. Um, also, as well, if if anybody's listening to this audio for the first time, I mean I've listened to this for quite a few times, but on first listening, it does go backwards and forwards in time. The storytelling, it's at the present and then it's at the past, and it's at the present, it's in the past, and then it, within 10, 15 minutes you realise what's going on. The flashbacks. Uh, but it doesn't. It doesn't really explain that. But then you get used to it. Oh yeah, right. It's it's what happened 27 years ago with the general and all like that. And now it's back in the future again, and they're travelling down to the sea base. Um, so the, the, you know, if anybody was listening to that on the first time, it could be quite confusing. But um, but for me, it's it's David Collins' portrayal um, from the beginning of the audio. The, you know, you know he's got a secret. He's got a secret, and you don't know what it is. And then you find out the TARDIS is down on the, the in the sea base. Oh, he's been there before. And then he's also secretive, and he wouldn't tell um, Ruth. You know what? What he knew. What did he say? Um, if I told you the truth, I have, I'd have to kill you. Um, and to be honest, I think he meant that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That that's the sort of character it came across. Yeah, usually that's just like a throwaway joke line. You know, I tell you, but yeah, then I'd yeah. have to kill you. He meant it. 
But yeah, I see your point, Lee. It, yeah, it, but because you by the end of the, the by the end of the audio, you realise the doctor didn't want to be on Earth. He wanted to escape. All he wanted to do was get his TARDIS back and get away from this planet. He'd do anything to get back his his uh, travelling machine. And I think it's a good way of it's a good spin on the good doctor. We've got a bad doctor, and it is a good spin. Over to you. Yeah, I, I think that that the that the spin was definitely round way wrong way around. Um, I yeah, I was uh, I I I kind of enjoyed the swearing though. I I always thought that the that Doctor Who needed to have a bit of uh, vulgarity, profanity in it, because you know, some of the stuff that they deal with, you know, you you come upon a Dalek and and he's all like pleasant and and even keeled. No, not right. But anyway, that's just that's just to to counter what Lee had said, and um, yeah. I, I've seen the I've seen the other doctors use a gun. I, I mean, the Doc Holiday hands the doctor a gun and the gunfighters, and you know, doctor doesn't want to use it. Doctor doesn't even want to handle it. Doesn't even really know how it's supposed to be working. He's kind of, you know, looking at it sideways and and and, and dangling it from his fingers. <laughs> but you know. The doc, the fourth doctor, had that big gun. I don't know. There, there have been doctors with guns, but not, not as a general rule, just manipulating people. You know, this is like, you know, way past seven. You know, in terms of manipulation and and control, it's way into like the Ronnie, like like that kind of experiment on humanity make them into something else kind of thing that super soldier thing that that beef dad was talking about it was it's it's the real deal like like that that's what you know you you hear you heard the stories in the 50s about aliens that have done the the probes on humans and stuff like that taking them up to their spaceships and this is about this is approximately the same thing because the seabed is basically a different world so anyway yeah that was that was interesting and but the unbound nature of it like the fact that it was like um something that that could happen you know uh it's it's always a question i mean could we all go bad i mean you know joe kendo would say yes we could we could all go very bad it just depends on how much passion we have for the situation and um but I just like to think, you know, that 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 somewhere in the in the mix, uh, Ruth will will, you know, sort it out and become, you know, happier, you know, healthy again. Um, but you know, maybe she'll just become a homicidal killer. I don't know. Anyway, that that's the other thing is like, you know. Is it true that Doctor Who weaponizes the companions? In this case, yes. In the in other cases, uh, I don't really know. But yeah, in a way. But no. But yeah. Um. So, lots of questions. More questions than answers here, I suppose. And uh, with that, uh. What would what would your um, l let me just ask you um, alien alien uh, abduction or alien uh, experimentation movies TV shows what were you, what would be your favorite go beef dad sorry I don't entirely understand the question is there is there an alien uh, television show or, or movie that, that when they were experimenting on humans that, that is your favorite or that you'd like to um, do you, that you have a, any recollection or fond recollection of not that I have a recollection of no. all right no. 
No. Mind you, I do, I do remember um, David Collins um, played Maldrin in the Maldrin Undead. Yes. In the 80s. That's cool. It was, it was funny, he faked, he faked being regenerated doctor at the, in, in the last episode of that, as far as I can recall. Yeah. And here he is playing the doctor. It's extraordinary. Mm. Mm. I didn't realize that. Ah. Oh yeah, that is, he he did two or three. Oh, no. Mind blown. I think he did. Three yes, he he, he played he, he played pool in um, Robots of Death. Mm. Boris in Avenger the Cybermen. Huh. Awesome. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Avenger Cybermen. Yeah. So, Lee, do you have a favorite uh, alien uh, experimentation movie? Uh, well, I'm trying to think. I mean, there was, you know, there was the Invaders, but that was uh, TV sh the, the authority to take over the bodies. Invasion of the body snatchers, of course, the taking over the bodies. It's experimentation. Um, there was a there was a few, wasn't there? In, the X Files series. Yes, that's. Uh, the, the, I can't remember. The, can't remember the title of the episode, so, but there was a few that I were quite like. I'm sure there's. Isn't the one? Um, is it Fire in the Sky? Yeah. Movie. Where he gets abducted. It's supposed to be a true story, based on a true story. Yeah. Or something. I think it's called Fire in the Sky or something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I asked. Yeah. I, I was just gonna. You know, do some watching because I really don't. I really, um, I've, I, it's a trope, but it's not, not one that I've actually got a lot of uh, re relationship with. Anyway, so um, final say and score, please. Let's start with Beef Dad, please. Excellent cast, excellent performances. Um, Really superbly directed. Loved the soundscape. But because of the doctor's violence, he gets a 9 out of 10. Thank you. And Lee, what would you score this and final say this? Well, my final say is David Collins, um, the doctor that never was, which we could have had. Um, but it will always, always be silver from sapphire and steel to me. Um, this is the match. But, um, it's just hard on this I, because this. I say I'm going down the other route. It's not the. It's not the guns. It's the swearing for me. Um, that goes against it. So it's getting a nan as well from me just because of the swearing. All right. Well, um, I. Kind of enjoyed it. Um, I will give this an eight out of ten. Um, not, uh, not. I mean, not bad performances by David Collins, and and I totally forgot that he was a modern. Oh, that, oh dear, that was that was a bad. And also, I've got some other things to watch now. Thank you, Lee. And uh, so you you guys, please watch what we watch. You know, Susan, and Susan, Susan also watched Robots of Death with him in it as well. Oh yes, oh, oh yes. Yeah, oh. where he, he suffers with the robophobia. Yes, yes, and he it turns out that he is a robot, or he's made himself a robot, right? Right, right. Anyway, yes, yes. Do please do not throw hands at me. Um. Anyway, it was it was good to it was good to go this dark way because it's Halloween. It was, spooky spooky uh, horror season uh, here on Geeks Assembled and so thank you fellas for for listening and, and casting with me and please tune into our Facebook page, Facebook group Twitter, Tumblr uh, Lee has is, 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 is us all dialed in on his Instagram you can stay up with us on that and, and by all means, uh, do watch what we watch and, 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 you know, come along with us on these adventures because we, we're not, uh, and listen to what we listen to 
because we're not uh, we're not doing this without you. I mean, we'd like we'd love you to you to you know let us know what you think about these things too, and and also come join us if you're 18 and older and have a camera and a little microphone. You can come and talk talk with us and yap for you about it, and you know we'd love to have you. So with that. Uh, Toodaloo.